Hey guys, it's me, Master Fighter. Today I want to show you guys how to pass through a graphics card to a virtual machine, as well as getting the best performance possible out of said virtual machine. Before we start, I want to thank the Arch and Gen2 Wiki for being great references for this topic, as well as the guys over at asus-linux.org for some of these tips, especially those being the libvert hooks. Now you may have the question, why would I want to pass through my GPU to a virtual machine? And the answer is for a couple of reasons. One, sometimes running an isolated virtual machine with its own resources is better than trying to do multiple tasks on a host system at the same time, because you might not be using your resources evenly. Two, there is software that makes use of the graphics cards that is not available for, or feasible for use on Linux, namely some video production software and many multiplayer games. Oftentimes, these games require more than what a traditional Spice client can offer, and as such, the solution is to pass through a graphics card to said machine. Uh, we need to make sure that we have installed Vert Manager, WGit, GPU Pass-Through Manager, DKMS, the Jack Example Tools, Looking Glass Client, and the Looking Glass Source Code so that we may install a module that's included with it. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open up a terminal and confirm that we have IOMMU enabled, and we can do this by typing in sudo dmessage pipe grep dash i dash e dash capital dmar-e capital i o m m u and if you get any output whatsoever after you type in your password then that means i o m m u is enabled you don't get any output then you either need to check your distributions documentation or you need to check your motherboard settings and see if it is enabled or not the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and pass through our graphics or set up our gpu for vfi driver loading. So we're going to use GPU pass-through manager, which should already be installed. We will run GPU pass-through manager with root privileges because it's required. So we'll run sudo GPU pass-through manager. And then we will select the two cards that we want to load for VFIO. I've already done that, so I won't be doing that, but you'll just click these two and then click load VFIO, and then you'll restart your system. And then after that, we will install the hook helper. I will have all of these in the description so that you will not have to watch me type these in. And now I've installed the hook helper and now we will restart the libvert D service. So we'll type in systemctl restart libvert D. And then we will go ahead and copy the scripts that I have here also in the description. to etsy libvert slash hooks slash qmu.d and then name it whatever it is that you want to name it. I want to name it name. And now we will create our virtual machine. So load up vert manager. I'm going to give it 16 gigs and then 12 CPUs. I'll give it 40 for the tutorial, but I will be demonstrating with another virtual machine later that I've already made that's already pre-configured. And then the first thing we need to go is we need to go to our CPUs section, uncheck copy host CPU configuration, and make sure that host pass-through is the one that is the model. And we're going to enable available CPU security flaw mitigations. And then we're going to manually set our topology. We want one socket however many cores you want to pass through. And then if you have hyper threading, you want two threads. I have six cores I want to pass through and I have a hyper threading CPU. So I'll be passing through 12 virtual CPUs. Now the next thing that we will do is we will add our GPU. So we're going to add hardware, PCI host device, and we're going to add our graphics card right here. It needs to be everything that is in our IMMO, IO, MMU group, which you can see here, there's nothing else in the O capital B section except for these two, so we will add those. And now we need to go back to our terminal here and we need to edit, we need to edit slash Etsy slash lib vert slash qmu.conf. And we need to go down to the user section right here, the user equals section. And you need to, it'll say, use you it'll be commented user equal root you need to uncomment it and put your username here 
And then for group down here, it'll also say root, uncomment it and put AVM in there. Then you'll save and exit. And then we're going to go back to vert manager and we're going to go to our XML and we are going to add these lines right here. We're going to add, we're going to replace that domain line with that domain line I just added. And then we are going to take audio here and we're going to go right below sound and put that in there. And then we're going to go to QMU command line here. And then we're going to add that right below devices and right above domain. And then we're going to apply to make sure that it's stuck. And then we need to run Jack LSP, Jack underscore LSP to see all of our devices names. I want to pet, I want my HyperX device to be the one that I hear my virtual machine out of. Whatever it is that you choose, it only needs to be enough for it to determine what the device is. So if you have two HyperX devices, for instance, then you will need to add more information. So like, say I have HyperX Virtual and HyperX Real, then I need to add HyperX Virtual, but I've only got one HyperX input. So I will use just HyperX. So we'll go to input name here and do HyperX period wildcard and then we'll do the same here hyper x period wildcard and then we'll do capture underscore f and then in square brackets lr and then the input will be playback underscore f and then square brackets lr and we will click apply and now that we've done our sound and then we'll go ahead and optimize our virtual machine some. So we're gonna add these lines here under Hyper-V. And uh, there is another line. There's another line that we need to add. If you have an NVIDIA card, you also are probably gonna have to do this with the AMD card as well. Um, do uh, ran vendor ID stay on. Add that as well. And now we should get our virtual machine the ability to manage CPU power states. And uh, we will do that by adding these lines right here. Make sure it's stuck. I always check that. And then we'll go under current memory so that we can enable huge pages. We're going to add these memory backing sections right here. Now let's go ahead and pin our CPUs. So we're going to go to CPU, uh, right under the virtual CPU section, we're going to add CPU tune, apply that, and then we're gonna add our cores. Which would be right below IO threads and right above emulator pin. I've already set up for the most part, this, but you need to count virtual CPUs from zero, whoever, however many you want to do. I'm wanting to do 12, so it'll need to be from that. And then you set your actual physical CPU. So I'm wanting to do the latter half of my CPU. So I'm starting from 12 to 23. And then while we're here, uh, let's go ahead and pass through our cache, which will give us a lot more performance. There it is. And you want to add it right here. Now we will edit our VM virus folder. So we will do sudo vim slash etsy slash libvert slash hooks slash qmu.d slash name slash vmvars.conf and we need to edit our settings. So we need to do vm memory and then we need to copy over however much memory and kibibytes that we are using. 
Uh, I want it to all be performance for me because I'm using this on my desktop, but on my laptop, I usually set it off for schedule till or on demand. And then down here, uh, we need to set CPUs that we're gonna isolate. So VM isolated CPUs is actually talking about what CPUs are isolated from your virtual machine. So I want the first 12 cores of my CPU to be reserved for my host. So I will do zero to 11 and then 12 and 23 will be used for the virtual machine. And then down here, we need to add the total amount of CPUs that we have in the system. It has to be the amount that we use. So I do zero to 23, which will be 24 CPUs total. Now that we've done that, uh, we can go ahead and install Windows. Sorry about that, I had to make a little fix. Um, IO threads, the IO threads one section needs to go above CPU two, not below. Now we can go ahead and start installing Windows. And I'll go ahead and skip through this part because uh, you don't need to learn how to install Windows. All right, now that we've got Windows installed, let's go ahead and install our GPU drivers. Forgive me, Richard Stallman, for using such a horrible browser. Uh, we will go ahead and install the NVIDIA drivers. And while we're waiting on that, we can go to lookingglass.io, which is the official Looking Glass website, and do download now. And we want to download the official stable recommended uh, Windows host binary. Then we want to extract all. Then we'll close that. And then on our desktop here, we will create a, a text file called looking glass post. Oh, hold on. Looking glass post.ini. If you have AMD, then skip this step. We'll do in square brackets app and then capture equals capital NVFBC. Then we will save that. And then we will um, cut it to program files, looking glass host, and put it in here. And now we will go ahead and install our GPU drivers. And while we're waiting on that, uh, we will go ahead and install the fake virtual display driver. Uh, so I'll have the description in the GitHub, but I'm gonna have to look it up here. All right, so we wanna go and get the zip file here. Let me go ahead and do this. And then we'll extract it and then we will move this file that's in here. So it needs to have this in it looking like this. We'll move it to our C directory and then we will open up the terminal as an administrator. We will move into the IDD sample driver directory and then we will run this command dot backslash cert mgr dot exe slash four slash add idd sample driver cer then slash s slash r local machine root now we can exit out of that and then we can go to device manager and we can click on any one of these and we'll go to action and add legacy hardware. Uh, we're going to do install the hardware that I manually select from a list. And then we'll go to show all devices, have disk, browse. Then we'll go back here and IDD sample driver. 
then click OK, OK, next, next, install. And then all we have to do now here is we'll go down to where our resolution that we want is. So 1920 by 1080. And then we're going to add in the refresh rates that we want. So I want 1080 by 120. Or, you know, I want, I want my refresh rate to be 120, then 144. And uh, just a tip, um, if you want as close as you can get to VSync, because VSync is not going to work with this, go to LX Render and type in the exact value that you see in there, and then make one of those here. So my, re my monitor doesn't actually have true 165. It has like 164 by 99. That'll show up as 164, but it will work though. So now that we've done that, and now that our drivers are installed, we can go ahead and shut down our virtual machine. And then we can go back to our XML. And I promise, guys, we are almost finished. We will add this line here. And just some preface. Um, if you have a different size monitor, then you're going to have to do a different size SH mem block. 128 megabytes should be plenty for even 4K. So I did 128, um, and if you do more, then you know it's not going to do any harm. 128 should be good for everybody, though. Um, you're going to want to add this, and now you're going to want to go to your Looking Glass folder. So go to the Looking Glass Source folder, and then go to Module, and now we're going to run sudo dk ms install dot i'm not going to do that because i've already done that then we're going to run sudo mod probe kvm fr static size mb 128 and we're going to run sudo chone sabian kvm slash dev slash kvm fr zero and replace uh, my name with your username. So whatever is Sabian and replace with your username. And then we're going to add an alias to our bash RC. Hold on. It's going to be alias spice or whatever you want to call it equals single quote looking glass client dash capital F dash lowercase f and then slash dev slash KVM FR zero and then single quote. Then save and exit, and then you can source your bash RC. And now we need to create a file at Etsy slash mod probe D slash KVM FR dot conf. And uh, it will contain these contents here. I'll put that in the description of the video. And then we need to create one at slash Etsy slash U dev slash rules d slash 99 avmfr dot rules and it needs to have this in there and i'll also add that in the description replace my name with your username save and exit and now the last thing that we gotta do this is the last thing and i promise you is we just go to our vm and then we set our video to none all right then we'll start up our virtual machine and then there you go. All we got to do is just go to our display settings. Do 1920 by 1080. Then we just set up the refresh rate that we want. And I want to do 164 by 99. And you see how smooth it is. If you didn't do the DMA, this is DMA buffer mostly doing the work here because if you didn't do this then you wouldn't be able to run this at this refresh rate and this is borderline no tearing whatsoever it's not going to be reusing frames or anything like that or be going too fast for the spice client so it is perfect to game in uh thanks for following this tutorial on uh, in a moment i'm going to do some demonstration for you but uh, anyways, if you like the tutorial, um, like and subscribe, uh, share, you know, if this helped you out or if you know somebody who needs help with this. Leave a comment if you got any questions and uh, I hope you'll have a good one.